You really want the truth of it. He is the God that made a way in the beginning. And in the end, he'll be the one that uh, uh, will ultimately take us home and we'll live forever with him. But a lot of times we miss out that he is the God. They sing a song, he's the God of the middle. Amen. The life that we live every day. Brother Rich, he's right here with us. And he's helping us and sustaining us and giving us everything that we need. And I was thinking as she was singing that song, the one thing that he cannot do is fail. And we were talking in Sunday school about uh, uh, why some miracles happen and some don't. And but if we really knew the inner working, somebody made that statement behind how God reasons things out. Amen. God never makes a mistake. Amen. He knows the best. And he gives the best. And, and he will do what's best for his people today. From the cross to the uh, to the grave to today, he still knows. Amen. You may be seated this morning for just a moment. We appreciate you being out here again today. And I'll say that again. So grateful. Amen. For what God is doing in our lives, in the church, in the community. Amen. So uh, just get right in this morning, wherever you're from. You just, uh, uh, I say every time, you're at home this morning. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So you're at home this morning. You just get in and worship the Lord any way that you see fit. Amen. Anything from raising your hands to coming to the altars. Amen. When the front door is unlocked, the altars are open. Amen. That's just the way it is. Amen. That's what we're here for. Amen. It's to worship him and to, and to meet, uh, let him meet the needs. So you just obey God this morning and everything will be right in order today. We make a couple of announcements very quickly. Amen. When this is, a, like I said, a very special day at the end of service. We're going to go outside and have a small service out there. And we won't take but just a few minutes. Uh, tonight in our night service, we're going to have a youth service. Like we done last month, the youth are going to do everything that Kyle be preaching tonight. Amen. Last month was tremendous. They've done an awesome job. Amen. You want to be blessed? Amen. Come listen to these young folks sing and leave the service. It just done my heart good. Amen. They're going to do that again tonight. They had a great night out last night. They had a youth trip. Everything went real well. So that'll be tonight my night service. Next Sunday morning, we'll start at 1030. We'll have any Sunday school next Sunday at 1030. We'll start worship, and we're going to have a service, and we're going to have lunch for this Sunday, and we won't have anything Sunday night. So uh, remember that coming up in the 13th. I'm going to have a fall festival that Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. So remember these announcements coming up pretty quickly. You may come on with us and receive our, our tithes and offering this morning. If you have a chance to give us unto the Lord today. You have been faithful, and God is blessing the church. And, and as long as you'll be faithful to him, he'll be faithful to you. Amen. I don't preach a lot on money. I don't preach a lot on tithes. Amen. I do preach a lot on your heart. Amen. God gets my heart. The rest of it will fall in order. Amen. So you just give this morning as God has blessed you today. Amen. Brother Rich, would you pray over our altar this morning? Oh, Father, we thank you for, for your blessings, for your wonderful ways you take care of us and provide us. We thank you for this opportunity to give to you. And you just pray that you bless, it, bless everyone that can. In Jesus' name.
and just went back to passage of scripture in Revelation chapter 5. Jesus has just finished talking to John and John wrote all the things about the churches in the first three chapters and chapter 4 talks about some different things but chapter 5 takes on a whole different look. It said and I saw in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne a book written that written within on the back side sealed with seven seals and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose those seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth nor under the earth was able to open the book nor to look upon John said and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book neither to look thereon and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. <laughs> one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Jesus said it this way, I am he that was dead, and he that is alive, and that he and that is alive forevermore. The only person that can ever make that statement, the only man in history that can make the statement that I was dead, and I am alive, and I will live forevermore, is the same one that we feel in this house today. It's his very presence that is moving in our midst today. He is still alive. Today. He is still on the ball today. He is still God today. And he's still in control. Come what may, he's still God. Let it all break loose, but he's still God. Let it all fall apart, but he's still God. He has still prevailed. And I'm here to tell you today that he is a God that prevailed over any situation in your life. There is nothing you're facing that is too big. Amen. There is nothing that is too hard. There is nothing that is too small. You know, a lot of times we want to get caught up in the big things. The big things that I need. I need a heater or I need a financial miracle or I need this or I need that. What about the little things in your life? He's just as concerned about the everyday aspects of your life as he is the great big miracles that you need. He is still God today. He is still a God of miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 I could just stop right there and preach a while from what I just read. Amen. But I believe God has given us a word for this morning. Amen. Appreciate his time and his praise to you this morning. Amen. She just set everything up perfectly. Amen. What she sang, what she done. Amen. Just we'll go right along with what God has laid on our heart for today. Amen. This story, we won't be too long this morning, so we'll come get you pretty quickly. Okay. Amen. Amen. Just keep your mind on the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. The God that was alive and was dead, and now I am alive forevermore. Amen. He is still God today. Amen. I don't know about you, but that was a beautiful thing to see that train just walk that way. Amen. Again, I think that you'll go hold our hands up and praise. Amen. That's what it looked like going through that door. It looked like a train of cheetahs. Amen. Somebody talked about, well, I, I, I saw a thing on Facebook this week. and It's been on there lately. Uh, I said something along the lines of people complain about noisy kids in church. Give me a church full of noisy kids rather than a pew, a church full of quiet people with no kids in it. Amen. Give me a church full of noisy kids rather than a silent church full of pews. Amen. Went to that youth rally Friday night and Brother Marvin made the statement. And, and, and it's been said a lot of times. People say, well, those young people and these youth, like our youth service tonight, they're the church of tomorrow. No, they're not. They're the church of today. Amen. They're the church of today. 
Amen. They're just as much a part of the church. Those kids going in the back. I mean, those ladies that are going back there to help them this morning to teach them. Amen. It's a tremendous thing. Amen. So if you got a kid back there, thank you for bringing them. Amen. We're glad you're here. We're glad you brought your children here. Amen. I'll go ahead and throw this out there. And you can like me or not. And leave. And when we leave, that's your responsibility to bring them. Amen. God gave them to us to teach them, train them, and bring them to the house of God. Amen. God will bless you, Lord. Amen. He'll bless your family. He'll bless your home if you'll put him first in everything today. Amen. I didn't say that to get your mind off of what God was stirring in this building. Amen. If that did, Lord, help us this morning. Amen. Psalm 103. And I'm just going to continue along those lines. Amen. What she just saying goes right along with what God has laid upon our heart for this morning. He is a God of miracles today. Amen. He's a God that does. And, and, and I thought about during Sunday school. Amen. I thought they're going to get most of what I'm going to preach. If we don't hurry up, get the clock, don't get to 11. There ain't going to be nothing left. Amen. But God does miracles in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes God brings healing. Sometimes he doesn't. Not here. He all they're they're forever healed on on the other side. We don't always see the miracles that we would like to do here. But I thought about this in Sunday school, and I'll say this uh, uh, along those lines, and then I'll get into my message for just a minute this morning. The one thing you can believe that God always does, and I can prove this to you by Scripture, that in every life, that every child that has ever been conceived. God always does what's best for that person, for that child, for that man, that woman. I dealt with a lady out of one of our churches that we were with. She lost her husband and just could not, uh, uh, just could not get a grip with that. And one Sunday afternoon, I was kneeling down in front of her recliner as as the as it was just the grief was just so hard in her life and the holy ghost spoke to me that day and i asked her a question i said you love him so much that you wanted the very best for him and she said every day i wanted the very best for him and i said well you have to believe that god loved him that much too and god wanted the very best for him it's not what was best for me or you but God always does what's best for him, for that person. If I hit this floor before we leave this building and God takes me home today, God done what was best for me. Would it be hard for my wife and my kids? Amen. I would certainly hope so. Amen. But God does what's best for us, for me. You as an individual, God loves you just that much. Amen. So in every situation, amen, it's not that God picks or chooses. God does what's best for every individual on an everyday individual basis. Psalms 103, verse number 1, verse number 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You may be seated this morning, amen, for just a few moments today. I'm not going to hold you very long in here. I'm going to go outside and have a service out there. I will say this too before we get outside and I forget. If you would, if you don't mind, some of you may not like pictures. Amen. If you would, before we leave here today, after we do the balloon ceremony outside, I would we could gather on at least on the porch and get a picture. Yes. Amen. What are we doing? We're going to put this out there for our community to see. Yes. Amen. The files of our church, you know, to see what God is doing. If we don't chronicle where we came from, how are we going to know where we're going? Yes. We don't chronicle where, we're, where we've been. When we get there, we won't be able to look back and say, hey, remember them days? Yes. Amen. You look so good in your pink. And, and I like my, my beautiful little beads. Amen. Cannon walked up to me a while ago and said, Here, Brother Barry. Amen. And I put them on my neck and he smiled and I said, I'll wear them all day long. <laughs> Amen. That baby thought enough of me. I'll wear them. Somebody said, Where you get them beads? And them babies give them to me and I'm going to wear them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 103, 
Bless the Lord, O my soul. This is the eighth psalm that David has written as a psalm of praise. It is a psalm of praise, but it is also a psalm that contains five admonitions or five encouragements uh, to praise the Lord. In this scripture, we see 30 different things. Uh, amen, don't get nervous. I ain't going to preach all 30 of them this morning. We see 30 different things that the Bible said that God does uh, for his people. Uh, amen. 30 different things in these few verses that we read today. He starts out verse number one as he does in a lot of different ones. Uh, amen. Talking about the blessing of the Lord. Uh, and in the Psalms of praise that he wrote. Uh, amen. Most of the Psalm, a lot of the Psalms are, are written as Psalms of praise. Some of them are Psalms of distress. Some of them are Psalms of encouragement. Some of them are Psalms looking into the past. Some of them are Psalms uh, that are written to look toward the future. Uh, amen. But this is the eighth one that David wrote as a psalm of praise. Uh, he starts out by saying bless the Lord. Uh, oh my soul. That word bless simply means uh, what you think it means this morning. It means to bow down or to worship uh, or to have adoration for some uh, something or someone uh, that is higher than us. Uh, amen. Bless the Lord oh my soul uh, and all that is within me. Uh, bless his holy name. Uh, when I ask you that I'm going to ask you a question this morning. When you came into this building, what was your purpose today? When you came in this building this morning, amen, and you sat down and the Sunday school began or, or the worship began or the fellowship began, amen, what was your purpose this morning? Did you come to bless his holy name? Did you come to worship him this morning? Amen. Truly today, amen, you may not have had the best week, amen, you may not have had everything to go exactly the way you wanted it to go. Amen. But I look around this morning and I believe every one of us today, amen, I'll go a little further than that. Every one of us today has a reason to bless the Lord this morning. Amen. You might have had a bad week. Amen. My brother in the corner said he had an expensive week this week. Amen. You got if you got equipment and trucks, amen, and things that happen, amen, life is going to sometimes get expensive. Uh, sometimes life gets hard. Uh, amen. I've had a pretty rough week uh, physically. A lot of you uh, have had a rough week physically. Uh, amen. A lot of different things may have happened your way this morning. Uh, but one thing I can stand this morning uh, and tell you uh, is that I can still stand uh, and say bless the Lord. Uh, oh my soul uh, and all that is within me bless his holy name. Uh, amen. And for no other reason this morning uh, I am still here. Amen. My eyes awakened this morning and there was breath in my body. I had help this morning. Amen. I had a grocery cabinet full of basically anything that I wanted to eat. We got in a vehicle that had air conditioning and heat. We come to a church to sit on padded pews. We had pretty clothes to put on. Anything that we basically wanted. Amen. What do we not have to praise him for this morning? We ought to bless his holy name. He has been good to me. Amen. He is good to me every day. I'll go ahead and throw this out there. He's a whole lot better to me than I've ever been to him. I failed him time after time, but he's never failed me. He's always been there. David said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. I looked at this last night as I began to study and began to pray. God has dealt with me all week about this passage of scripture for this service this morning. Amen. And sometimes it's easy to forget the benefits of God. Sometimes it's easy to forget the blessings. Sometimes the reason we don't bless him like we should is because we're so quick to forget how good he's been. For every miracle that God has not done in your life, I would dare say you can replace it with ten that he has. For every prayer that you think he didn't answer, but he did in one way or another, and that's a whole other sermon for a whole other day. 
For every prayer that you didn't see him answer, there's probably 10 that you can say he did. Amen. But we are so easy to forget. We are so easy to let it slip our mind. And, 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 and I look up that word. I, 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 whenever, whenever I study, I dig into a lot of different things. And, and, and sometimes just little simple everyday words uh, kind of catch my, my, my mind. I, I looked up that word forget. Uh, and it means to mislay something. It means to lay it somewhere where I really didn't intend to lay it. I intended to remember Hey, Amen. God's been good to me. God healed me. God gave me this family. God gave me. Hey, amen. I, I, I hope Sister Hannah Beth don't mind me using her. I read her post yesterday of the scripture that they put in, in, in their house. Uh, amen. I read that last night and I was reading. Uh, amen. Through this scripture about had a, 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 a spell sitting there on, on the couch of how faithful God really is. Uh, amen. When we look back and see things. Uh, amen. That did not go just right or did not go the way that we think you should and I'm going to tie this into this service today in just a few moments uh, amen but we look back uh, amen and sometimes uh, those memories are hard and sometimes uh, those circumstances uh, are difficult uh, amen and we may mislay them uh, back because we'd rather not remember those times those difficult places but, but uh, on the other side uh, if we're not careful it's so easy to mislay uh, amen the blessings uh, it's easy to mislay the times, amen, that God was faithful to us, amen we don't need to, to mislay we don't need to put aside amen, how good God has been, it also means to do away with the obvious or it means to be oblivious and I believe sometimes that's exactly where we fall sometimes I believe we get so <laughs> caught up and I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm fixing to say this morning. So many times we take God's goodness for granted till we become oblivious to what he's doing every day. We're so used to, brother, and we're so used to him just blessing us anyway. We're so used to, brother Kyle, everything working out. We're so used to every week getting that paycheck. We're so used to every morning getting up and taking our kids to school. We're so used to every day getting up and going to work with that we have become oblivious to, to the fact that every day that we do those things is because of the blessing of God. It's because of the blessing of God. You get a paycheck every week from Paul's glass and tire. Amen. Some of you, wherever you work, you get a paycheck and you say, I earned that paycheck, but I can tell you of a time in my life I'd have gave anything for the ability to go and make a paycheck because God brought me to a place that I lay flat on my back for about four months amen having reconstructive surgery amen and I realized then amen that everything I thought I was doing and everything that I was building and the life that I was making that I thought I deserved and that I was doing so good at I realized it only comes because of the grace and the mercy of God and because of his goodness and his faithfulness. We don't ever need to be oblivious every day to the blessings of God. Every day we don't need to forget that it all comes from him. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen. Forget not his benefits. His benefits. And that's what I want to talk to you about for just a few minutes this morning, the benefits of God. Benefits simply means the way you're treated, the treatment that you're given. It is an act of goodwill. It is an act of service. Or it is an act which is given to you by someone as a reward. As a reward. See, I looked at that last night and I thought, you know what, I don't fall in that category. I don't fall in the category of ever deserving a reward. 
I don't know about you, you may look at yourself differently, but I don't find myself ever falling in a place where I could ever do enough, amen, because of the other things, amen, that I have done in the places, amen, that I have been, amen, the things that, that has happened in our life. I don't think I could ever get to a place that I could say God is rewarding me for anything that I could ever do, amen, it's not because of what I've done or who I am, amen, it is because of the goodness of God. It is an act of goodwill that he has given to me every day that I live. The benefits that I see is an act of his service toward me. It's not an act of my service toward him. I could preach till the day I die. I could serve him every day with everything that is within me. And I could never do enough service to him to owe him. Amen. To repay him for what I owe him. But it's because of of the service that he gives to me and the love that he gives to me and the acts that he brings my way. Yes, I want to serve him because he's been good to me. I want to serve him, amen, because he has saved me, amen, and kept me from going to a devil's hell. But there is another side of that. I need to serve him and love him just simply because of who he is and that he is God and he's been so good in my life every day. Yes. Not because of what he's done, but because of who he is. Lord of mercy, I'm trying to hurry. Forget not all his benefits. Then you find the rest of that chapter where he talks about the benefits of God. Verse 3 he starts out, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. You ever wonder why David put that one first? You ever thought about why that one listed first? First thing he said was, forget not all, all his benefits. And the first thing he said was, he forgives me of all my iniquities, all my shortcomings. Brother Lee was here, he preached a whole night on iniquity. The iniquities that, that is in my, he forgiveth me of all my iniquities. What you find in verse number three is that there was a threefold curse that had been put upon man from the time that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. There was a threefold curse that held man captive. And if there was a threefold curse, then there must be a threefold cure to cover the threefold curse. And he starts out by saying uh, he forgives uh, all of my diseases. Uh, the second part uh, of that uh, is that he heals or he forgives uh, all of my sins. Uh, the second part, uh, he heals all of my diseases. Uh, and the third part uh, is that he redeemed my life uh, from an eternal destruction. This chapter is broken down in those three things. He forgives all my iniquities. Romans chapter 6 says this. I, 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 and I may say this a lot this morning. I've had some opportunities this week to have some conversations with some people about some different things. Do you realize how many people live today under condemnation and call themselves Christians? They live under condemnation of their past when we're supposed to be living a life of freedom from our past. Romans chapter 6 says this, Now there is therefore no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the Spirit and walk not after the flesh. There is now therefore no condemnation. Once you are saved, when he forgives all your iniquities, the condemnation is gone. I had a person say, I just keep hearing these voices over and over and over in my mind. Well, you've done this and you've done that and you've been here and you've been there. And I said, I assure you that the voices you hear are not the voice of God reminding you of anything. Because when God forgives you, it's in the latter part of that chapter. He removes them from you. He removes the condemnation. He throws the sin and the sea of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west. And he never remembers that anymore. 
So you hear a voice in your ear reminding you it's not the voice of God because God is not a God of reminding you. The only thing God will ever remind you of is his goodness. Amen. He'll never remind you of your past. And he forgives you. You are forgiven. And I got to hurry. I ain't got time to preach all that this morning. He heals all our diseases. He said, Brother Barry, that don't make a lot of sense. Everybody's not healed, but they are. Maybe not here. God never said he'd heal everybody here. Amen. We won't get into that this morning. There are so many different things that go along with that. Why does God do this and why does God do that? I just started this whole out by prefacing this by telling you that God does what's best for you. He does what's best for the individual. He healed all of our diseases. First, the third thing is he redeems us from an eternal destruction. Without him, I was lost and undone and on my way to a devil's hell. The verse number four says this, who redeemeth thy life from destruction and crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who redeemeth you? David said that he has taken care of the threefold curse that was over your life. He has moved that off. He has removed the condemnation. He has given you freedom to live in Christ. And now he said he's going to finish the job. He said he is going to redeem you. He redeems me. That has the notation that you'll find in the story of Ruth and Boaz over in the book of, of Judges, I believe it is, where it, it talks about the next of kin. You realize whether well, you even knew it or not, you had a next of kin that loved you before you loved yourself. Amen. You had a father that loved you before you ever loved yourself. The next of kin. Amen. It means to buy back a relative's property. To buy back a relative's property. I looked at that last night and that began just roll over in my spirit to buy back relative's property. You know why God allowed you to be born and why God created you was to have fellowship with you. For you to be his son. And the only reason that we're not is that some things have been taken away from the family of God. There's a lot of people this morning that are not living as a part of the family of God that was intended to be part of the family of God. You have a next of kin. And then David said he redeemed you from, his, from the life that you have lived. God wants you back. If you're in this room this morning and you are not saved, if you are in this room this morning and you are not a part of the family of God, i got good news for you. God's looking for you. And God wants you back. What do you mean? But Barry, I've never been born. I've never been saved. Well, you know what? You were born. You were conceived as a gift of God for somebody somewhere. And God is looking for you. And God loves you. And God wants a relationship with you. And this morning, God wants you back. He wants to restore the fellowship with us. That he had with Adam and Eve. Amen. That ain't possible. I don't live in a garden of paradise. No, you got a better opportunity than they did. Amen. I won't get into all that this morning, but amen. We can meet in the parking lot and talk for three or four hours after church if you want to. God wants to restore the fellowship that we once had. God wants to buy us back to restore us. It means to deliver. <laughs> and the last part of that, and I never even saw that before until I got to digging into it last night. It has the connotations of a marriage. Of a marriage. Brother Rich, the Bible calls the church the bride of Christ. Amen. We are his bride. And he is setting Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father right now. Looking to the Father. Waiting on the time to come and get his bride. He wants you back. 
He wants to redeem your life. He wants to buy you back, to bring you back into a relationship with him. The next thing he said that he does, after he redeems you, after he gets you back into a relationship with him, he said he satisfies Listen to what he said in verse 5. Who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle's wings. He satisfies you. That means to fill you to satisfaction. For you to have plenty. God didn't just bring you into a relationship. He didn't forgive you and redeem you and bring you into a new relationship with him to leave you. He brought you into that relationship to have a daily walk with him, for him to be your father. Amen. This little fellow right here with the big hair. Amen. He depends on daddy and mama. Amen. I'm 48 years old. There's a lot of ways I still depend on daddy and mama. Amen. I always will. If it wasn't for daddy and mama, Wendy and Mary wouldn't be here. Her daddy and mama. And then parents take care of their kids. Sister Glenn's got one on both sides and one behind. Amen. Look down your pew. Look in her, look in her arms. They're depending on us. A father and a mother, a parent, they're depending on us to supply their needs and their desires and their wants. Your heavenly father is the same way. It is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To supply you with everything that you need. He satisfies you with good things. Good things. We have Sister Colette said in Sunday school, life ain't always perfect. Sometimes we have hard times. We see that good things and we think everything's going to be perfect, but it's not. He satisfies us with good things. He will be sufficient. He will be sufficient. That word satisfied means to bring you to a place of satisfaction. But you know what? Sometimes he'll teach me to be satisfied with a whole lot less than I think I got to have. Sometimes he'll teach me, Brother Kyle, that what I think I want, I really don't need but I'll tell you what he will be this morning and I'm going to come to a close. He will be sufficient in your life. The next thing he said that he does and this starts over in verse number 6 and goes all the way through verse 17. It talks about him executing righteousness. Executing righteousness. That means he will do things or apply things to your life every day that you need. He'll execute righteousness. He will accomplish things in your life that you never thought he could. He will accomplish things through you. He will give you power and strength to do things that you thought you could never do. He did means to advance you. You ever thought about that? God wants to advance you. God wants you to grow in him every day. God wants you to be more in the kingdom of God than you have been before. He wants to advance you and therefore he is executing righteousness in your life every day. That word execute, but God simply means God's got his hands on you doing things. He's handling you things. He's, he's taking things away. He's rebuilding. He's restoring. He's executing. He's making things happen in your life every single day. He will advance you. He will grow you. He will bring you to new places and new things in your life. But it, it means to bring to a new place. It means to bestow. God wants to bestow things on your life that you never dreamed that he could. You never dreamed that he would. Why? Because he's a God of blessing. Verse 1, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his men. He's bestowing them on you every day. Lastly, it means to deal with. 
Amen. He, he is dealing with us every day. When Kyle said a while ago, I'd rather be in the fire with God than out of it. And I forgot exactly how he said it. I'd rather be in the fire with God than out of the fire by myself. Something like that. I'd rather him deal with me every day. Even in my hard times. Even in my good times. When everything's great, God deal with me. When everything's not good, God deal with me. But the one thing I don't want him to do every day is to just leave me alone. <laughs> Amen. It may be correction, but as long as he's correcting me, he's still dealing with me. As long as he's blessing me, he's still dealing with me. I need him to be here. Every, the benefits, and I went through this very quickly, the, the benefits of God are limitless. The rest of that chapter, he goes into talking about the forgiveness and throwing your sin as far as the east is from the west. I want to close this service in two ways. First of all, I want to say that if you're in this room this morning and you don't have this personal relationship with him, if you don't know what it is to be redeemed, if you don't know what it is to be forgiven, then you need to get that step made first. Because if you do that, you're entitled to everything. You are entitled to all the benefits that you find in this chapter and all the way through. But it starts with forgiveness. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just a moment. I want to play something real softly. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Where are you? If you are in this room this morning and you don't know him as your personal Savior, you're still living under the three the threefold curse that, that I talked about, but I got good news for you. There is a cure. And his name is Jesus. He'll forgive you. He'll redeem you. He'll bring you to a place of satisfaction. He'll supply your every need. He'll deal with you and walk with you and work with you every day. What about it this morning? Very quickly, I'm not going to drag this thing out. What about you this morning? Would you like to come and pray? We want to open these altars.